Hello. This video aims to help builders and designers determine wind classifications for new houses or renovations anywhere in Australia using AS4055, the Australian standard wind loads for housing. If you have a copy of AS4055, you may want to get it out now. Correct wind classification is important to prevent building damage. Wind loads on houses generate uplift on the roof, pressures and suctions on windows and racking forces on the walls. The site wind classification is key to ensuring that houses have the appropriate capacity to resist all of these forces. This video presents the steps specified in AS4055 to calculate a site's wind classification. AS4055 applies only to houses, with limitations on size and shape. A separate video presents an example of how to determine the wind classification for a house. Strong winds can occur in any part of Australia. The map in AS4055 shows four wind regions for the whole country. The first step is to determine which wind region the town is in. Where a wind region boundary passes close to or through a town, the cyclone testing station recommends using the higher wind region for that area. For example, the Bundaberg area is close to the boundary between wind regions B and C. So all houses in or near Bundaberg should be considered to be in wind region C. For the next steps, we focus on the site. You will need to picture what it will look like in five years time. For example, it might be on the edge of a development now, but in five years it might be surrounded by new houses. The second step is to determine the terrain category which is a measure of the roughness of the terrain over which the wind blows on its way to the site. Look at what is within a 500 metre radius circle centred on the site. Clause 2.3 defines five terrain categories. One is the smoothest and three is the roughest. Rougher terrain, that is ground with lots of obstructions like trees or buildings, can slow the wind as it passes over them. If there are different terrain categories within a 500 metre radius, the one with the lowest number is selected. If there are any rivers, inlets or lakes wider than 200 metres within any part of the circle, then the site is TC1. During strong winds, small bodies of water like inlets and lakes stay relatively smooth. But waves that break on ocean shores and on very large bays like Port Phillip Bay make the water surface a bit rougher. If there is any ocean within 500 metres, then the site is TC 1.5. Large open spaces without many obstructions such as golf courses, parks and paddocks are all TC 2. If they are larger than 250,000 square metres, which is the equivalent to 500 metres by 500 metres, and any part of them is within 500 metres of the site, then the site is TC 2. Large lots with less than 10 houses per hectare are terrain category 2.5. If this type of development is within 500 metres of the site, then the site is TC 2.5. Terrain category 3 applies to fully developed suburban areas with more than 10 houses per hectare. Parks smaller than 250,000 square metres can still be included in terrain category 3. Dense forests can also be considered terrain category 3 if they're permanent. In this example, there is an ocean within 500 metres of the house at Site A, so it is TC 1.5. Site B has vacant land in a new development within 500 metres, but the land will be developed within the next five years, so the site is TC 3. The third step is to determine the topographic classification. Houses near the tops of hills experience higher wind speeds. Clause 2.4 describes the method to determine the topographic classification. First, focus on the hill. Use contour maps to find the top and bottom of hills, ridges or escarpments and calculate their height. Then mark the contour around the mid-height of the hill and measure the shortest distance between the top of the hill and that contour. The slope of the hill is calculated by dividing half the hill height by the shortest distance between the top of the hill and that contour. Then focus on the site. Use the contour map to determine whether the site is in the top, middle or bottom third of the hill height. Note that the region beyond the crest of an escarpment is treated differently. Use table 2.3 to determine the topographic classification. Step 4 is the selection of the shielding class. 
Large obstructions close to a building will deflect some of the wind. Only buildings of the same size or larger can offer shielding. In wind regions A and B, if an adjacent forest is dense enough, it can also offer shielding. There are three classes of shielding, full, partial and no shielding. A site is fully shielded if it has at least two rows of houses on all sides, as in this example. Any site with only one row of houses between the site and open ground is partially shielded. The site in this example is partially shielded as there is only one row on the south side. Any site adjacent to open ground is unshielded, even if the open ground is only on one side and it has two rows of houses on the other three sides, as in this example. The final step is to use all of the information to look up the wind classification in Table 2.2. Select the wind region and the row for the terrain category. Then the topographic class tells you which block of columns to use and the shielding narrows it down to one column. The selected column and row intersect at the wind classification for that particular site. In AS4055, the worst terrain category, steeper slope and most open shielding can all be in different directions. Notice that for the steeper topographic classifications, that is T3 and above, there's no full shielding because the wind can blow over the top of neighbouring houses. More exposed sites have higher wind classifications, and they also have great views. The better the view, the higher the wind classification. So when you're on a site, check the view. This house certainly has a great view. Obviously though, the wind classification should have been higher. The steps outlined in this video are detailed in AS4055 and use information from online resources. Make sure you visit the house site to confirm the details found off the web and to assess the view as a final check. The wind classification is required to select appropriate windows, member sizes, connections and structural details for new houses and renovations. Correct wind classification is vital to building wind resistant houses. If you would like more information on calculating wind classification for a site, another video is available that provides a worked example.